Palestine, a holy land for all the Abrahamic religions, where controversies, wars, conflicts, and events have not stopped for decades, and the members of each religion have different views and claims on this land. The most common of these claims is that the Palestinian Arabs sold their land to the Jews, leading to the creation of the State of Israel. Did the Arabs really sell their land? Let's take a closer look in this video from videos about countries. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button if you like the video. Although the boundaries of Judaism's promised land are debated, one thing is certain. The modern state of Israel is located in that land. The last Jewish state before Israel was the state founded by Simon Bar Koba in 132 against the Roman Empire in this land almost 2,000 years ago and lasted only four years. The Romans waged war against the post-revolt state and the last Jewish state before the short-lived state of Israel disappeared. Not only did the Romans end this state, but they also massacred some of the Jews, enslaving some and deporting others. They forbade them from entering Jerusalem. They changed the name of the region from Judea to Syrian Palestine. Although Jews were expelled from the city of Jerusalem, they continued to live in the region. In the 16th century, for example, there were 10,000 Jews in Ottoman-controlled Palestine, representing 5% of the region's population at the time. While in other Arab lands under Ottoman rule, ethnic populations were homogeneously distributed in their localities, the Jews in Palestine were different. Instead of coexisting with other ethnic groups, they were concentrated in Saft, Tiberias, Hebron, and the outskirts of Jerusalem. This community, also known as the Jews of Palestine, is called the Old Yishuv. The adjective old is used to refer to those who immigrated, especially after the 1800s. Those who immigrated later are called the New Yishuv, while those who have lived in the land for centuries are called the Old Yishuv. The idea of an Israeli state in Ottoman-ruled Palestine was first officially proposed in the late 1700s by the famous French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. When Napoleon proposed this idea, Jews were a minority in Palestine, and immigration from Europe had not yet begun. After a while, Moses Montefiore, a banker of Jewish origin, born in Italy and living in England, who was on good terms with the Ottoman administration, appeared. Montefiore, who was also related to the Rothschild family, had shown his influence on the Ottoman administration with another incident. In 1840, in Ottoman Damascus, a Christian priest disappeared with his servant after being last seen in a Jewish neighborhood. The Jews were blamed for this, and their homes and businesses were attacked. They now lived in fear. Seven community leaders and 35 young people were taken hostage. Moses Montefiore went to the scene, convinced the Ottoman authorities of the Jews' innocence, and secured the release of the hostages. Upon his return, he visited Istanbul and told the Ottoman Emperor, Sultan Abdulmasid, that what had happened was a smear. He also convinced Sultan Abdulmachid that the Ottoman Jews were loyal subjects and that no hardship should be imposed on them. Moses Montefiore visited Palestine in 1848 and was struck by the plight of the Jews there. Using his influence with the Ottoman administration, he made it possible for the Jews of Palestine to cultivate the land, engage in agriculture and animal husbandry, and open educational institutions to support themselves. The Ottoman treasury, which borrowed foreign money for the first time during the Crimean War in 1854, made a number of arrangements to get out of the difficult situation. One of them was the Land Law of 1858. This law privatized 70% of the land previously owned by the state and leased to citizens. Despite the land law, the sale of land to foreigners was still prohibited. However, foreigners began to own property in Ottoman lands indirectly. They did this in several ways. One was to register the purchased property in the name of an Ottoman citizen. The other was to acquire Ottoman citizenship. Since they did not lose their citizenship rights in their home countries, they did not lose anything. Some foreigners also married Ottoman women in order to buy property. In 1854, Judah Turo, a wealthy American businessman and close friend of Moses Montefiore, died. In his will, written before his death, Judah Turo requested that a large portion of his fortune be used to benefit the Jews of Palestine under the supervision of Moses Montefiore. With Judah Turo's support, Moses Montefiore traveled back to Palestine, and in 1859, outside the walls of the old city of Jerusalem, he purchased land across from Mount Zion and established the first Jewish settlement. The settlement was built in what was then considered a very dangerous area, and the residents felt that it would not be a stable, safe, and comfortable place to live. 
Montefiore also purchased the farmland surrounding the settlement and distributed it equally to each family that settled there. He also provided cash for all the settlers' material needs for the first year. He opened a school for young girls, teaching them sewing and needlework. He built the windmill that still stands today to distribute free flour to the poor. Mishkanot Sha'ananim was the first place in the land of Palestine that Jews bought and owned. After the first loan in 1854, the Ottoman treasury, which was already in a difficult situation, fell into a spiral of debt. It now often demanded loans from European countries. In return for these demands, the Europeans pressured the Ottoman Empire to grant foreigners the right to buy and sell property. As a result of this pressure, the Ottoman government granted foreigners the right to purchase real estate in 1858, but did not actually implement this right until 1868. After land sales began, most of the land in Palestine fell into the hands of aristocratic families of Greek origin, such as the Lebanese Sursok and Twaini. In 1897, the first Zionist Congress, led by Theodore Herzl, announced that Jews were seeking to establish a Jewish state in Palestine against the rising tide of anti-Semitism in Europe. In 1917, at World War I, the Ottoman Empire lost Palestine and British Mandate rule began in the region. In 1918, Jews purchased 1.5% of Palestine from Greek aristocratic families in Lebanon. During the British Mandate, the Jews, with the support of the Western powers, took over 4.5% of the territory, both through purchases and by displacing the Arabs, despite the strong opposition of the Palestinians. The British gave most of the land acquired in this conquest to the Jews in exchange for symbolic fees. This was especially the most fertile land. The Jews forced all the Palestinians on the land they acquired to emigrate, destroying their settlements and villages. All the while, the land that the Jews bought directly from the Arabs amounted to less than 1% of the Palestinian territory. The Arabs were forced into this sale by the British. The British threatened to expropriate their land if they did not sell. In addition to land purchases, after the migrations that began in the 1900s and accelerated after the First and Second World Wars, the idea of dividing the land of Palestine between Arabs and Jews grew. This idea was brought to the United Nations in 1947. The members of the United Nations agreed on a plan to establish two separate states in the region, with 57.7% of the land going to the Jews, 42.3% to the Arabs, and the city of Jerusalem to be under the control of a neutral international administration. However, at the time of this decision, the Jews owned only 7% of Palestine, and the Arabs did not accept the plan. On May 14, 1948, Great Britain announced the creation of the Jewish state, ended its mandate in Palestine, and withdrew its troops. David Ben-Gurion, the founder and first president of Israel, declared the state of Israel on the same day, citing the United Nations plan. This declaration marked the beginning of the Arab-Israeli wars. The Israelis began a campaign called the Plan Dalet. The purpose of the Plan Dalet was to seize the land that the United Nations plan said belonged to the Jews. All Palestinians in these places would therefore be expelled from their land, and those who resisted would not be tolerated. For this reason, Israeli troops carried out many massacres, the most known of which is the Deir Yassin Massacre. Arabs and Jews fought the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, the 1956 Suez Crisis, and the 1967 Six-Day War. And at the end of each war, Israel's territory expanded a little more so much so that it even exceeded the United Nations plan that was originally used to justify the creation of Israel. Today, the Jews have squeezed the Palestinians into two small territories and are still trying to expel them.